Here's a quick one while we're all locked down because of the coronavirus. Monsters, University, and Disability. Because while I agree that this movie would be pretty mediocre outside a few gags... Have fun, kids! I'll just be here listening to my tunes. The way Monsters University looks at disability really turns the tables and makes this movie something special, at least to me. Because there are certain traps people fall into when they write about disability, my favorite of which being the desire to cure the character's disability. I'm also not a big fan of the message, your disability actually makes you cooler than abled people. Toy Story 4 provides a good example of both. Throughout the Toy Story series, the toys all share a very real fear of being broken, because then children won't want to play with them anymore. What's the point in prolonging the inevitable? We're all just one stitch away from here to there. When toys work any other way than the way they're supposed to, as a brand, they have to be fixed by the end of the film, or else they're as good as dead. Then the fourth movie goes, hey. Maybe that's not the best message to send to young kids? And gives us Duke Kaboom, a toy who came out of the box unable to perform his signature jump and who ends the movie by performing an even cooler jump? Then you have Gabby Gabby, who was never given a voice box, to show that you don't have to be made the same way as everybody else to be loved, the movie gives Gabby a voice box, which allows her to behave like any other Gabby would, and plays a crucial role in helping her find a loving kid. I'm Gabby Gabby. Will you be my friend? I'll help you. What? <laughs> I will applaud the way this movie treats Bo Peep, though. When she breaks her arm, Woody flips out because when he ripped his arm, he had to worry about being forgotten or thrown away. Bo, meanwhile, doesn't give a shit. Her arm doesn't work the same way as another Bo Peeps might. Who cares? That's the kind of representation I like, where disabled characters aren't treated as any worse or better off than the main characters. They're different, that's all. But for Duke Kaboom and Gabby Gabby, who are built differently, their disabilities are treated as a problem to be solved. They still have to find a way to work like or better than the commercial, correct versions of themselves to get their happy ending. Kaboom. Now you might be like, that's a good message. To tell differently abled kids that they can find a way to do the things abled kids do, maybe even better. Because as a disabled person, they're forced to think outside the box and do things differently. I agree, that's a good message. It's not like I want these kids stories to have downer endings where the disabled characters don't get to do the thing they were made to do or whatever. I want Dory to be able to navigate the sea, same as anyone, along with all her disabled fish friends. I want Duke Kaboom to be able to make that jump. But a lot of the time, the stories that celebrate disability as another part of what makes you so special they tend to rub me the wrong way. There's this animated short that nearly got nominated for an Oscar last year called Henrietta Bukowski, about a woman with severe kyphosis whose dream is to fly a plane. Everyone tells her she needs to give up and resolve herself to a life stuck on the ground. But in the end, guess what? Her kyphosis turns out to have been wings under her skin the whole time, which erupt from her back and finally allow her to fly. Her disability is framed as something secretly beautiful or even freeing, when really, most of the time, I'm on the autism spectrum, and there's nothing beautiful about 13-year-old me working till 11 at night to finish her homework when all her friends had finished hours ago. There's nothing beautiful about 15-year-old me sitting alone at lunch because she hadn't figured out how to hold a conversation yet. There's nothing beautiful about the realization that your chosen career field or dream wasn't built to accommodate people like you. Having a disability doesn't mean I'm secretly cooler or more beautiful than anybody else. It means I have a disability. And sometimes that does allow me to do things other people can't, like become a Voltron encyclopedia. But a lot of the time, it means I'm in a marathon with a ball and chain cuffed to my leg that nobody else can see or, once it's pointed out to them, don't want to acknowledge or accommodate me for. 
So when creators decide to cast that race in an inspirational light, or even romanticize a character's disability, that doesn't lift me up. It honestly makes me feel kind of unheard, you know? It's like, well, what if Duke Kaboom can't do that 40 foot jump? What if Gabby Gabby can't talk to kids like she's supposed to? Does that make those toys somehow lesser or failures? It's not something kid shows have to address by any means. You can do anything you set your mind to, and disabled people could do cool stuff too, are good messages. Monsters University dares to go the extra mile though. That's what makes it so special to me. This story shows us a character who has fought their whole life to achieve a dream, and then doesn't get that dream, not through any fault of their own, but because of how they were born. Mike doesn't find a way to be a scarer that's cool and uniquely him and better than anybody else. He fails. This story gives us a Duke Kaboom who falls midway through his jump, and it still manages to be a lighthearted, hopeful story. Mike wants to be a professional scarer, but he's told he'll never succeed because he simply doesn't look scary. Mike's conflict always circles back to the fact that he was born with a body type that bars him from certain careers. It's very easy to read this as an allegory for disability. If you're neurodiverse or disabled and you watch this film, you're probably going to relate to Mike a lot. Because of the way he was born, he has to work extra hard to keep pace with people who don't even seem to have to try. While other students party and play, Mike studies. He's told he'll never achieve his dreams over and over and over again because of a condition he can't control. And because of that lack of support, Mike has learned to rely only on himself. So for this to work, I'm gonna need you to take every instinct you have and bury it deep, deep down. Done. From now on, we are of one mind, my mind. Oh, please. I will tell you exactly what to do and how to do it. It's a familiar narrative that's bound to resonate with a lot of disabled or neurodiverse folks. He works harder than anyone. Do you think he's scary? He's the heart and soul of the team. Do you think he's scary? So Mike works his whole life to defy expectations and become a pro scarer. He gets accepted to a top scaring school, Monsters University, where students taunt him endlessly about how he'll never be a real scarer. Let's be honest, boys. You're never gonna be real scarers because real scarers look like us. <laughs> then Mike wins the school scare games and shows everyone he can do whatever your average scary monster can. Except... Stop, take some time to think, figure out what's important to you. Stop, take some time to think, figure out what's important to you. You gotta make a serious decision. Sully rigged the test to help Mike win. And when Mike goes out to prove himself and test his skills on a bunch of real kids, they aren't scared of him. He does everything by the book, but he still can't change the fact that at the end of the day, he's not scary. You were right. They weren't scared of me. I did everything right. I wanted it more than anyone. And I thought, I thought if I wanted it enough, I could show everybody that, that Mike Wazowski is something special. So Mike packs his bags and leaves the school of his dreams. He believes that because he couldn't achieve his dream, he's a failure. But then Sully stops him. I don't know a single scarer who can do what you do. I know everyone sees us together. They think I'm the one running the show. But the truth is, I've been riding your coattails since day one. You made the deal with Hard Scrabble. You took a hopeless team and made them champions. All I did was catch a pig. Technically, I caught the pig. Exactly! And you think you're just okay? You pulled off the biggest scare this school has ever seen. That wasn't me. That was you. You think I could have done that without you? I didn't even bring a pencil on the first day of school. Mike, you're not scary. Not even a little. But you are fearless. And that's what sustains this film's hopeful tone. Monsters University tells viewers that if you fail to achieve your dream, that doesn't make you any less valuable or smart as a person. And Mike does go on to do something very like his original dream. 
he becomes a trainer for scarers. He wasn't able to make that dream a reality for himself, but he could still find success in an adjacent career, one that allowed him access to many of the things that drew him to scaring as a little kid. Not only that, but Monsters University encourages viewers like Mike to reach out for help. Like I said before, Mike has been taught that he can only rely on himself to get where he needs to go. He has to learn how to be part of a team and trust others to be able to help him. Monsters University even takes the time to point out that like, yeah, this guy who seems like a natural, who was born with the ability to do the thing you have to work your ass off to even get close to, he's probably not as confident as he lets on. It's very true that a lot of the time, the folks who don't seem to need to study or even work that hard to be the best struggle with things like anxiety disorders. They didn't develop good work habits like other people did as children, so when they start to struggle, they don't know what to do. They're terrified to lose that gifted kid label because that's how they've defined themselves for so long. Monsters like you have everything. You don't have to be good. You can mess up over and over again and the whole world loves you. Mike. You'll never know what it's like to fail because you were born a Sullivan. Yeah, I'm a Sullivan. I'm the Sullivan who flunked every test. The one who got kicked out of the program. The one who was so afraid to let everyone down that I cheated. I remember at art school, as I struggled not to break down over these massive assignments, there were always these kids who would show up to critique every week with beautiful pieces. And I kind of resented them, because they seemed to represent all that I couldn't be, no matter how hard I tried. It was only years later that I started to really understand that those people were stressed out of their minds. I think I might have met one person who was all around a stress-free, naturally gifted person. Everybody else who churned out that amount of amazing content struggled with horrible anxiety. Mike, I'll never know how you feel. But you're not the only failure here. I act scary, Mike. But most of the time, I'm terrified. At the end of the day, Monsters University tells kids they're not alone. Even the people who seem like they're gifted are probably scared out of their minds. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to fail. You don't have to make that jump. You can find fulfillment in a career that's not exactly the same as the one you dreamed about as a little kid, and none of that makes you lesser than your peers. Because kids will have to deal with the reality that, yeah, Sometimes there are things you can't do when you have a disability. Sometimes having a disability isn't pretty or cool. It's hard. And I think it's really special that Monsters University found a way to make that fact a little less depressing. This ending is framed in a triumphant way, even though Mike technically failed, because he's still on track to finding a career he loves. And he's not alone anymore. That's really cool to see. So maybe you gave this movie a pass when it first came out, and that's fair because, again, it's very cliche and otherwise pretty fine, good, outside of this one aspect. But yeah, maybe give this film a shot. A huge thank you to my patrons. Your support means a ton. Honestly, you guys are the best. If you, kind viewer, would also like to get your name on the screen, then, uh, you can also get videos early when you donate to my Patreon, so uh, go ahead and pledge maybe? Love y'all, you can't always do what you set your mind to, but you'll probably be five anyway. <laughs> Bye!